RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television, presents the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. <laughs> For your enjoyment, here is the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Anne Whitfield, Walter Scharf and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Faye and Phil Harris. <laughs> Since the time RCA Victor first began serving the American public, it has become recognized as world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. RCA Victor first brought you the super heterodyne sets, radio as we know it today. RCA Victor developed the 45 RPM system of recorded music. And RCA Victor was first with mass-produced television for American families. The knowledge and technical know-how gained through such pioneering is your assurance of RCA Victor's quality. When you select any product bearing the name RCA Victor, you get the finest instrument your money can buy at prices that fit neatly into your buying budget. Let's take television, for example. RCA Victor, and only RCA Victor, brings you supersets with picture power. These RCA Victor supersets give you clearest reception possible, even in fringe areas. There's virtually no interference. See this new RCA Victor television with picture power in big 17-inch television models. You get a choice of beautiful cabinet styles. Yes, on every count, RCA Victor is the finest name in television. The one, the only name to remember when you buy your television set. So keep this in mind when you choose television, radios, phonographs, or records. Look for the name, RCA Victor, the cornerstone of home entertainment for three generations. <laughs> Last night, the Harrises had a costume party at their home. The guests came dressed as their favorite historical or fictional characters. Everyone had a good time, especially Frankie. The party broke up quite late, and Phil asked Frankie to spend the night. As we look in, we find Phil and Alice at breakfast. Phil, why did you ask Frankie to stay all night? Well, honey, the party broke up late, and Remley was too tired to drive. <laughs> <laughs> I say tired. <laughs> Well, he acted disgracefully last night, and he looked ridiculous in that costume. The plumed hat, knee breeches, and a sword. What was he supposed to represent? His favorite historical character. Who? Lord Calvert. Well, I never heard of Lord Calvert in history. Well, you just don't read. He whiz. He was the hero of that famous book by Alexander Duma, the one about the winos. <laughs> I know it. The three Muscatels. <laughs> well, I certainly was ashamed of Frankie. He ate like a pig. I doubt if he'll be able to move for a week. Oh, wait a minute. Don't you worry about Remley. I guarantee that when he comes down to breakfast, he'll be fresh as a daisy. Why, he never overdoes anything. Uh-oh, here he is now. Good morning, Frankie. Curly, where you keep your stomach pump? <laughs> Ooh, those pains. Wait a minute. I'll never eat another drop of food again. Frankie, <laughs> it served you right for overdoing it last night. Oh, I never saw anybody stuff themselves the way you did. You ought to be ashamed never of yourself. Never mind the lecture. What you got for breakfast? I'm starved. <laughs> now, Frankie, you're not going to sit at the table looking like that. What's the matter with the way I look? You're wearing an old torn bathrobe of Phil's. Your hair isn't combed, you need a shave, and your eyes look like two eggs with the yolks broken. <laughs> That's a fine thing. I'm a guest in her house, and she insults me. Every time I eat here, I get insulted. I can eat in restaurants, you know. I don't have to come here. <laughs> then why do you keep coming? I'm a moocher. <laughs> Now, if you want me to change, I'll do it But it seems silly to get cleaned up before a meal Well, what's silly about it? I'm a sloppy eater <laughs> I'll only get dirty again Ramble <laughs> Now, will you go upstairs and change? Alice is right You look horrible And you're not gonna sit at... And look, while you're up See who's at the door Yeah, all right Yes? I brought the groceries and... <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter with you? 
here, Mr. Harris, and we'll sue him for a million dollars. <laughs> they certainly made a mess out of you. I'm not Mr. Harris. I'm Mr. Remley. Oh. You're looking good, Mr. Remley. <laughs> All right, beat it. I'll take the groceries then. Get your clammy mitts off of them linked sausages. <laughs> I ain't leaving no groceries until I get the money. Oh, that. Just charge it to my account. What was that last stupid remark? <laughs> you ain't got no account and you know it. I want $8.60. All right, if you want to be petty about it, I'll pay you now. How do you want it? You can have either an IOU, a promissory note, or my personal check. Now, there's a nice assortment of absolutely nothing. <laughs> I want it in cash. I don't have the cash. But uh, would you accept the traveler's check? Yeah, yeah, traveler's checks are all right. Let's have it. There you are. Thanks. I'll ca Wait a minute. What kind of traveler's check is this? What's the matter with it? It's on the Moscow Express Company. <laughs> this thing ain't no good. Of course it's good. Look, signed by the president of the company, Ivan Iron Curtain. <laughs> I think I heard enough. I ain't leaving this stuff here till somebody pays me. Hey, cash. Remley, who was that at the door? Oh, here comes another deadbeat. <laughs> it's about time you brought them groceries, kid. Here, I'll take them. I ain't leaving. Till I get paid. I'll pay you. With what? With money. M U N Y. Money. <laughs> With what? Here's a ten dollar bill. Oh, it's about time I got... Oh, how hokey can you get? <laughs> a Confederate bill. <laughs> this ain't no good. What am I gonna do with it? Save it, son. The South will rise again. <laughs> Hello, Julius. What's the trouble? I brought some groceries and I can't get paid for them. <laughs> oh, here, I'll pay you. At last! Real money! <laughs> oh, while I'm here, Miss Faye, there's something I want to talk to you about. Yeah? Something that's for your ears alone. Well, do you want us to leave, kid? No, you can stay, Mr. Harris. I just spell things out and you won't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> What's on your mind, Julius? Well, I want your advice, Miss Faye. You see, I have a G-I-R-L, and I want to get M-A-R-R-I-E-D. Do you think I'm too young? No, I think you're old enough to change your skates for a bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Julius, are you serious? Certainly. I'm in love, and I want to get married. Quit kidding. What would want to marry you? <laughs> a girl! <laughs> <laughs> Me. She thinks I'm the handsomest man she's ever seen. <laughs> what do you think I ought to do? Marry her before she finds her glasses and changes her mind. <laughs> she don't need glasses. I'd marry her in a minute, but where can we go? I can't take her home and live with my folks. Then take her back to Mars and live with her folks. <laughs> Phil, stop making fun of the boy. Now, Julius, you're awfully young to get married. How long have you known this girl? Almost a whole week. <laughs> You've only known her a week and you want to get married? Oh, the impetuosity of youth. <laughs> Julius, my boy, marriage is a sacred trust, and before plunging into it, a man must know all about the woman he's going to marry. What do you know about the girl? Has she got a sterling character? I don't know. Has she got a good family background? I never asked her. Has she got money? Two million dollars. Has she got a sister? <laughs> <laughs> Julius, I'm beginning to see this now. Look, kid, would you be so anxious to marry this girl if she didn't have money? Suppose she lost all her dough. What are you trying to do, louse up a beautiful romance? <laughs> but, kid, listen to me. You can't marry a girl just because she has money and have her support you the rest of your life. What would you do about your self-respect? I don't know. What did you do about yours? <laughs> Julius, I ought to 
honestly think you're too young to get married. Why? When you and Mr. Harris got married, you were both young. At least you were. <laughs> Don't you remember your romance? Ah, uh, she'll never forget it. <laughs> oh, no, I won't, dear. It was so romantic the way we met. How did you meet? Well, one summer, Daddy took me hunting in Canada, and Phil was our Indian guide. <laughs> Oh, heap big joke. <laughs> uh, then we brought him back to civilization and taught him the ways of the white man. How did you tame this savage beast? <laughs> With music. I sang this song to him. If she sings the Indian love call, I'll kill myself. <laughs> In the cool, cool, cool of the evening Tell him I'll be there In the cool, cool, cool of the evening Better save a chair When the party's getting a glow on and Singing fills the air In the shank of the night When the doings are right You can tell him I'll be there Sue wants to barbecue, Sam wants to boil a ham, Grace votes for booyah bay stew. Jake wants a weenie baked steak and a layer cake, he'll get a tummy ache too. We'll rent a tent or teepee, let the town cry or cry. And if it's RSVP, this is what she'll reply. In the cool, cool, cool of the evening, tell him I'll be there. In the cool, cool, cool of the evening, better save Mammy a chair. When the party's getting a glow on, and singing fills the air. In the shank of the night, so when the doings are right, so you can tell him I'll be there. In the cool, cool, cool of the evening, tell him we'll be there. In the cool, cool, cool of the evening, slick on on my hair. When the party's getting the glow on, and singing fills the air. If we ain't a McClink and there's something to drink, you can tell him. Miss Faye. Thanks. That makes me feel more romantic than ever. I made up my mind. I'm going to marry my girl, Wisteria. Well, don't watch you, please. I... Wisteria? <laughs> Where'd you find her? Creeping up the side of your garage? <laughs> Stop making fun of my girl. Ain't you got no feelings? What's the matter? You coot or something? <laughs> Don't pay any attention to them, Julius. Come with me and we'll discuss your problem privately, huh? Okay, Miss Faye. Tell me something. What did a young, beautiful girl like you ever see in that wrinkled old sheriff? <laughs> <laughs> there goes a the nice kid. Oh, great boy. <laughs> he has all the charm of an old handball glove. <laughs> Something, Remley? What? I'd give anything to get rid of that kid. He's been driving me crazy for years. You know, Curly, maybe this romance of his is a way to get rid of him. What do you mean? Well, if we can talk Julius into eloping with his girl, we can tip off the cops and have him picked up on a kidnapping charge. <laughs> <laughs> He'll get life for that. <laughs> yeah, that'll... No, no. No, Remley, I... I can't frame the kid and... Have him sent away for life. Why not? That ain't long enough. <laughs> now, look, Frankie, all we want to do is to get rid of the kid, right? right? So if we can get him to elope, that ought to do it. How so? How so? Here's how so. The kid's parents are against it, huh? Yeah. So if they elope, they'll have to leave town, and then Julius won't dare to come back. Yeah. All we have to do is talk him into it. <laughs> for us, that's a sin. Oh, beautiful thing. Thank you, and I'll do just that. Hey, Julius, wait a minute, kid. Hey, come in here a minute. Hey, Julius, what did Alice tell you to do? She told me to wait at least a year before I get married. A year? Julius, you can't do that to us. Of course not. Love is something you can't keep waiting. Besides, we got everything arranged. What do you got arranged? I've planned an elopement with Mr. Harris. <laughs> what have you planned? 
you think you meant for each other, go ahead. <laughs> Julius, I'm not going to elope with Mr. Remley. Then you better keep your eye on him because he wants to elope with you. <laughs> Look, when you try to get this through your flat little head... Now, Mr. Remley and I have planned an elopement for you and your girlfriend, Bougainvillea. <laughs> Her name is Wisteria. <laughs> I knew it was something that needs spraying. <laughs> Look, kid, you love this girl and you want to marry her, don't you? So why not elope with her? Gee, it sounds wonderful, but I'm in no position to run away. I got no money and I wouldn't know where to go. Well, now, we're going to help you. We're going to pay for all your transportation, make your honeymoon reservations, and I'm going to loan you my car to go to the station. That sounds like a good deal, and I accept. But how am I going to get Wisteria out of her house without her father knowing? Just leave that to us. You call her and tell her to be ready at 10 o'clock. Okay. Now, just let us know where she lives, and we'll meet you there at a quarter of 10. Uh, hiya, fellas. Sorry I'm late. Well, it's about time. What took you so long? I was detained. Saying goodbye to your parents is a sad occasion. Julius, you didn't tell your folks what you're going to do, did you? What do you think, I'm soft in the head or something? <laughs> I just made up an excuse. Well, did you call your girl and tell her to be ready? <laughs> yeah, she's all set. Good, good. Let's get started, Not huh? Not so fast. Did you take care of my transportation and honeymoon reservations? Oh, yeah, I stopped downtown took care of everything. Here's your hotel reservation. What kind of reservations did you get me? The best. I got you the bridal suite at the Black Hole Auto Court in Calcutta. The Black Hole Auto Court? <laughs> Formerly known as the Untouchable Inn in the Pine. It's the swankiest hotel in India. Yeah, and you could have your choice of either Hindu or Muslim plan. <laughs> Sounds good, don't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, great. And just how do me and me bride get to the snake pit? <laughs> I got your first-class transportation. Two lowers on the Istanbul Camel Express. <laughs> you guys must be crazy. I ain't gonna... Now, go wait a minute. Calm down. You ain't going to end you. <laughs> We've got you train reservations to Fertilizer Falls, Nebraska. <laughs> Fertilizer Falls. <laughs> On the banks of the Vigoro. <laughs> the stuff, but I had to get out of that some way. <laughs> anyway, we got him, so you get your girl in a lope with her. Here's a ladder. Just put it up to her window and drag her down. Fellas, I'm afraid to climb up that ladder in the dark. Oh, Julius, there's nothing to it. When I eloped with Alice, I climbed up the ladder three times. Why three times? Once for Alice and twice for her money. <laughs> <laughs> Grab that ladder and get started. Sorry, fellas, I ain't go. You gotta go. We... Look, Julius, if I go up and get the girl and bring her here, will you elope with her? Okay, that way I'll do it. Good. Show me which house is hers and what room she's in. It's that big green house with the white shutters. Yeah. Her room is the third window on the second floor. Got it. I'll be right back with her. You'll be ready for a quick getaway. Gee, Mr. Harris, I'm kind of nervous about getting married. Now, just take it easy, kid. Just be calm and easy. Hey, maybe I could calm you down if I sang to you. Well, that might work, except for one thing. What's that? Your voice makes me nauseous. <laughs> well, nauseous or not, you're gonna hear it. Now sit down and put your chin on that curb and listen. I was riding down the lonely road one day in Tennessee. The time was nearly midnight, it was dark as it could be. Oh, 
dark as it could be. When all at once I heard the sound of music from afar, that good old mountain music on a fiddle and guitar. Fiddle and guitar. Who we? It was the Tennessee Ghost. Who we? It was the Tennessee Ghost. A fiddling and a picking like a thousand men or more. The strangest mountain music you ever heard before. The strangest mountain music you ever heard before. Who we? A mighty man was he. The ghost from the mountains way down in Tennessee. So I rode on down the valley. And suddenly I saw that giant hill, Billy. My soul was filled with awe. Soul was filled with awe. One foot was in the valley, one foot was on a hill. A roar came down like thunder, he was laughing fit to kill. <laughs> <laughs> laughing fit to kill. Who we? It was the Tennessee Ghost. Who we? It was the Tennessee Ghost. A fiddling and a picking like a thousand men or more. The strangest mountain music you ever heard before. The strangest mountain music you ever heard before. Who we? A mighty man was he. The ghost of the mountains from down in Tennessee. That ooky spooky mountains, that old man mountain from down in Tennessee. <laughs> Julius, how'd you like that? Ah! <laughs> I said, how'd you like it? I can't hear you. Wait, I'll take my ears out of my pocket and screw them back on my head. <laughs> you can do it, too. <laughs> hey, Julius, I wonder what's taking Remley so long. Well, maybe he's having trouble getting my girl. Yeah, it could be. Hey, look. Hey, maybe you better get in the car and start the motor. Okay. That way, you see, then when Remley gets here, you can make a fast getaway. Hey, Julius, get ready to go! Hey, good boy, Frankie. Dump her in the front seat next to Julia. Right. Mr. Remley, what do you got her tied up in gags for? She put up a battle. She didn't want to go with me. Well, at least you got her. Now throw her in fast. Right. That's it. Okay, Julius, get going. Happy honeymoon. Happy honeymoon. What'd you come back for? You brought the maid, you jerk! <laughs> so I made a little mistake. What difference does it make? But I want to marry my girl. I don't want to marry the maid. Don't be a sucker. She probably makes a better bed. Now get going. <laughs> I ain't going no place till I get my girl. I never saw such a fuss, bud. Go to the grocery boy, get Ramley, go back and get his girl. Should I carry the maid back? No, no. She'll tip the whole thing off. Just put her in the back of the car and get the girl. Roger. <laughs> Julius. Okay, we'll throw her in it. Be careful. Hey. Huh? Hey, Remley, ain't she a little limp? Yeah, she's unconscious. <laughs> on the way down, she banged her head on the ladder. Well, if she's marrying Julius, she's better off that way. Dump her in. Right. All right, take her away, Julius. Happy on you. Happy on you, This time you got her mother. <laughs> Remley, how can you be so stupid? This dame's a hundred years old, you got it. Fellas, maybe we'd better call the whole thing off. Nothing doing. Now, Remley, look, throw the mother in back of the car with the maid. Julius, I'll go get your girl. And this time, try and bring back Wisteria and not the dog, will you? <laughs> Remember, it's the middle room on the second floor. The middle room on the second floor. Got it. <laughs> Hey, Julius, I got her this time. Here she is. Get going. Not so fast. I'm going to look for her. Nice going, Mr. Harris. 
I got in the right room, didn't I? Yeah, but you got in the wrong house. <laughs> it's the old man who lives next door. I thought her knees felt a little bony. <laughs> hey, Pop, why did you let me carry you all the way over here? Why didn't you stop me? Why should I? This is the first time I've been able to get away from my wife in years. <laughs> Will you shut up? <laughs> hey, don't worry, Julius. I'll be right back. I'm going back no, once more. Father, I lost interest in the whole thing. Besides, if we get What's caught... What's going on out there? What's that ladder doing up against my house? Holy smoke, it's Wisteria's father, and he's got a shotgun. Shotgun? <laughs> oh, come on, Remy. Let's get in that car quick. We better get out of here. Yeah, come on. You're on your own. So long, kid. But, fellas, you got my girl's mother and her maid in the car. Ooh, them dirty double crosses. <laughs> I'll get even with them if it's the last. Julius, what are you doing here? I told you to stay away from my house. And this please, time... Please, please, please. We haven't got time for that now. If you want to save your happy home, call the cops and have that car picked up. Why? Phil Harris just ran away with your wife and took your maid along to cook for them. <laughs> Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. You can take advantage of a terrific bonus offer if you act now with a purchase of any RCA Victor instrument that plays 45 records exclusively you receive at no additional cost over six dollars worth of record albums for instance if you select the Victrola 45 record changer attachment you get a $19 value for as little as $12.95 but you must act now now's the time to buy RCA Victor's 45 system of recorded music then you can choose your bonus record albums from a selection of 25 hits. Among them popular albums, classical, western, hillbilly, and children's albums, featuring such great RCA Victor recording artists as Tony Martin, Artie Shaw, Hank Snow, and Arturo Toscanini. Yet, these are just a few examples. There are many more. So take advantage of this unbelievable offer. You'll receive over $6 worth of record albums at no extra cost if you buy a Victrola 45 record player now. Folks, this is Phil again. I'd like to talk to you for just a, a few moments about something that is very dear and close to all of us and that is being very careful when we're driving. I don't have to tell you how many traffic accidents are happening daily. It's way up, it's close to a million. Don't you be the millionth casualty. In other words, it's very simple. When you're in the position to where you know yourself that you're not able to drive, it's easy to put a nickel in the phone box and call a cab. Don't take a chance. You can always pick the car up the next morning, even if you wouldn't hurt yourself or somebody in the car there's always trouble that you might hurt somebody that you love very dearly. Remember that we'll be on with you each week at this time directly following the big show. And thanks so much for being so wonderful. Uh, Alice, won't you say a word to our audience? Oh, I think you're all darlings. <laughs> Where's this coming from? This program is produced and directed by Paul Phillips. Remember, whether you're buying a television set, a radio, a Victrola phonograph, or record, Put your faith in the cornerstone of American home entertainment for three generations. RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television. Next, Theater Guild presents Casanova Brown on NBC.